This is Inside Badger Football with head coach Trey Shucker. Financial support for Inside Badger Football comes from Turner and Turner, attorneys at law. Blake Bell of Edward Jones Investments. The accounting firm of Turner, Rogers, Manning, and Plyler. Welch Funeral Home. Roger Wingfield of State Farm Insurance. Southern Bank Corps. Shelter Insurance. Southwest Sporting Goods. Taylor King and Associates. Mary and Martha's Florists and Gifts. Price and Company. Doctors Rob and Gary Rucker. Eccles, Thompson, and Ebone. Easybins.com. And Farm Bureau Insurance of Clark County. The host of Inside Badger Football is Preston Crowder. Hello and welcome to week two of Inside Badger Football with Philadelphia head coach, Trey Shucker. Coach, again, thanks for being with us. Um, last week against Cayman and Fairview, you got the first one out of the way, but um, you got the first home win out of the way this time, a 44-14 victory against the Hot Springs Trojans. How does it feel to get that one? It felt great. It felt great being at home and getting to play in front of our home crowd. Uh, that's awesome. So, um, you know, like I said, first home game of the year. Um, there's a lot of excitement around that. We do have the COVID restrictions, not as many fans in the stands. But uh, talk about the little bit, a little bit about the excitement of that game and how to kind of channel that the right way against another good football team. Yeah, anytime we're playing at home, you know, we don't lose at home, you know, and, and our kids take pride in that and playing at home. And it's just a different feel um, for them. You know, it, it's just a great atmosphere to be in. Definitely. Um, so if 2020, you know, wasn't weird already with the COVID restrictions and all that, we did start uh, Friday night's game with a lighting delay. Talk a little bit about how difficult it is for your team to kind of stay focused. It can be hard sometimes when you don't really know when the game's going to start. Um, you're just sitting around waiting for the go ahead to play. Uh, how did your team stay focused um, and, and stay ready to play uh, Friday night? Yeah, so, you know, we had the lightning delay uh, that really wasn't anticipated. Um, I mean, we check it constantly, but that was kind of a situation that just kind of popped up. But um, we kind of dealt with that similar in a similar fashion this week with rain and uh, just kind of find a way to overcome. Um, so we were, didn't get started till 8.15. We were able to warm up and didn't kick off till 8.30. Um, so we just had them find a spot in the, in the facility find a spot, quiet place, and kind of rest. And then once we kind of got the go-ahead, we were able to amp it back up. Yeah, and warm-up started at 8.15, kickoff at 8.30. It can be another challenge is not really having as much time to warm up, only 15 minutes. Yeah, and that, that's okay because, you know, our kids are – it's a first home game. They're ready to play. Um, they've been amped up all day. They're just excited to be playing. Awesome. Well, we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of these highlights here on our Friday night's game against the Hot Springs Trojans. So you guys do receive the opening kickoff, another low kick to you and uh, you get it and run it out to about the 30 yard line. Yeah, biggest thing right there with the ball on the ground is being able to secure the football, making sure that we get it. Now what tone were you trying to say here early in the game? Uh, pass on the first play, then, then two quick runs after you took a shot deep. Yeah, we just wanted to make sure that uh, we were getting the look that we had anticipated and practiced for. Um, we felt good about the first play and then from there we just kind of um, made adjustments as we went. Big run right there by Jay Sean. Our O-line had a great night. Um, we're able to pick up the blocks and make the calls that we needed to. And uh, Jay Sean was able to do a lot with his legs on, on Friday. Just missed that one. Buster back to pass. A good catch there by Alex Ward. Right. Alex is a really good uh, receiver for us. He has really good hands. Anytime the ball's thrown his way, we can count on him catching it. Jay Sean running hard. It's what we want to see from him more of, um, especially for the rest of the season. Here's Buster trying to make something happen with his legs, gets outside, pretty good run there from Buster. Yeah, that's something that Buster can do. You know, when a play breaks down, you're going to have to count for him because he can get loose on you. And here's Buster finding Tyler Fodger for the first touchdown of the night. Those two really like to link up. Yeah, they do. They're, they're a special group. Um, KP just running, playing fast, getting to the open area, and uh, Buster gave him a good ball. Now here's a really wild kickoff. Uh, the Hot Springs kick returner loses the ball, doesn't really know where it is. It turns out to be a break for you guys, almost a safety before progress had him down at the one yard line. Yeah, so the biggest thing on special teams right here is getting down the field quick and uh, getting to our lanes and making sure that we stay true to where we're at and uh, go make a play. 
And there's a safety, big play there by your defense. Big, big play right there, and that gave us a lot of momentum moving forward. Um, our defense is aggressive, and we want to go make something happen. Biggest thing right there, again, is just making sure that we recover the football. And a good keeper there by Buster. Really um, good. And that, just like I said earlier, is, you know, defenses have to account for Buster. Um, if they don't, then he's going to get loose on you. Never see it again, another keeper. This time they kind of had it snuffed out a little bit. Yeah, right there we probably could have got a foot in the ground and got, got vertical, just pick up as many yards as we can. And you hand it off to Jay Sean Davis, and he was automatic Friday night. Had a great game for him. He had a phenomenal game, and we we're excited to see more of that this season. This play right here, it looked like you had what you wanted, just barely overthrew him. Just, just a little out of reach right there. Um, and then we came back with a big run, Jay Sean. Running Good hard shit. when he's running hard, giving the ball again. So Hot Springs has only ran one play thus far, and you're already up 16-0. How does that feel coming out early? It was great. Um, our kids fed off that um, and kept the momentum going. And like you said here, another good um, coverage on the kickoff. They got downfield a little bit. This time they get out a little bit, and a great tackle there uh, to save uh, maybe a possible touchdown. Yeah, that was Keelan Nelson. Um, he, he's our safety on defense, and he plays all the special teams. Did a great job Friday night. Saved us a touchdown right there. Now their quarterback did lead their conference in um, passing yards last year, but a good uh, interception there by Kalen Jones. What was the game plan for their quarterback like? Uh, biggest thing was we were trying to get pressure on him and try to disrupt you know, his reads and try to, try to make him uncomfortable. A good run there by Jay Sean Davis again and another good pass to Alex Loy. It seems like, you know, anytime you throw the ball away, he can go up and get it. He can go get it. He's got great hands. And Deshaun taking it uh, all the way down the field right here and scoring. He's a, he's a big running back. He, he's going to give a lot of defense trouble. Did miss the PAT, but you're already up 20, uh, let's see, 22 to, to zero. Um, that, that's got to be a great confidence booster. Yeah, it, it's still good right there. I know we missed the PAT. Um, the weather conditions, the ball was kind of wet. Just didn't really get the ball down. Very clean. Defense flying to the football, and that's something that we take pride in at Arkadelphia is having a tough defense that gets to the football and uh, gets the ball carried down. Good three and out there, forced by your defense. Hot Springs did have a good punter. They got some good rolls the other night. Tried to get you back up into your own territory. Yeah, that's okay. Um, biggest thing is if they're giving us the football, we're, we're okay with you know letting it roll a little bit because we feel good about our offense moving the football down the field. Now talk about this play. It looks to have been a, a miscue on the handoff. Ball rolled all the way down to your one yard line where the Trojans recovered. Yeah, the mess just really wasn't good between our quarterback and running back. And uh, like I said, the ball was kind of wet. Conditions weren't great. It was just a kind of a long, drawn out read and just didn't work out for us. And they go with a direct snap here. Uh, get the touchdown, touchdown, go for two. Same, same formation, direct snap to the receiver. And uh, they get a two point conversion to yeah. bring it to 22 to eight. Here, good field position though on the opening kickoff, running all the way almost out to midfield. Yeah, so right there, Kalen was able to stay down, field the football, and he saw a running lane and tried to take it. And here's Jay Sean again. It seems like, Coach, he just wants to, he, he's looking for someone to run through. Talk a little bit about the mindset for him when he has the football. He's a tough runner. He is a big, strong, physical player. And when he's got the football in his hands, um, it's going to take more than one person to get him down. <laughs> There we see it again, another touchdown run for him, his third of the night already. Uh, miss, miss cue on the snap here for the extra point, but a good play there by uh, Loy again to get the two-point conversion. Yeah, so that was a really good play right there by Alex Loy, um, being savvy enough to you know, call the fire and, and get everybody out into their routes and try to, make, try to get that converted and we were actually able to convert it. So your defense is on the field. They've done a great job. The offense is playing well. You're already up 30 uh, to 8. Uh, 30 points in the first quarter. That's got to be a huge confidence booster for your offense going, uh, moving on in the game. It was. It sure was. And, you know, that first quarter, um, it seemed like we were moving the ball really quickly and scoring. Um, that first quarter kind of was pretty long, <laughs> it, it felt it like. But, um, you know, it, as long as we're scoring and we're holding, the defense is holding them, we're, we're fine. So a good field position here again. Another handoff to Jay Sean for an easy first down. I was really impressed with how Jay Sean ran all night. He was very, very strong with the ball. Buster trying to make something happen with his legs. Gets the snap. 
Buster did a great job of going through his progression and making the right reads on Friday. Took a deep shot here on fourth down, just barely underthrew him. Uh, a little bit more on that one, and it could have been a touchdown if he had a little bit. Yeah, we, we felt really good about it if that ball was a little bit further out. But, um, you know, Buster throwing a wet ball, we've not really had many situations to do that. Um, I was, he, was, he was really impressive all night long. Really weird play here, a bad snap by the Trojans. A break for you guys on fourth down gives you the ball on their own, on the Hot Springs 30. And here we see Buster again, making something happen with his legs like we've talked about, just really, really tough to stop when you, when you have a dual threat quarterback. Yeah, Buster's a special, special player to have. Right there, I wish we could have had that one back again. Um, if we put that ball out a little bit further, maybe we can run underneath it. Right here, you know, Hot Springs is bringing the pressure. Um, they're just trying to make something happen on defense. And this is where, you know, you got to count for Buster. He can get out on you. Fourth down play, just missed it by about a yard, so Hot Springs gets the ball back. Yeah. Our defense played really well all night long. Mm -hmm. um, made it really hard for Hot Springs to move the football, just playing aggressive. And, and they, did, they did have a very talented running back. Again, you saw some against Camden and another good running back here for the Trojans, a really big running back, uh, Devin Johnson, that can really, uh, can, plays kind of like Jay Sean Davis, uh, maybe not as fast, but likes to run into people and, and is really physical. Yeah, they had some really good players and uh, you know, we, we were just excited to be able to play at home and we brought the energy all night, mm -hmm. kind of got the momentum on our side and that we were able to rely on that. That's just a great play by Buster there. Talk about that one, just getting, getting outside. The hole did bring it back a little bit, but still just a great play by him. Yeah, so it just kind of broke down and Buster's able to outrun uh, the defense. Right here, Buster's just making a good uh, read, simple read, getting the ball out of his hands, letting the receiver go get yards. There's a third down play, Jay Sean fighting, gets you to a fourth and one situation, and then we'll see you hand it back off to Davis, and he just fights through a couple of tackles all the way to the end zone for his fourth touchdown of the game. Yeah, he, he's a tough, tough guy to bring down. I mean, he runs the ball really hard. PAT is good, so you lead now 37 to eight. Gotta be feeling good here in the second quarter. Yeah, we just wanna keep, keep playing the way we wanna play. Um, we, it doesn't matter what the score is, we're going to play hard all night long. And here on this series, you're getting good pressure, really good pressure on the quarterback here from your defense. Yeah, that's something that we want to do, and that was our game plan going in, was get pressure on the quarterback and not allow him to be comfortable to throw the football. So another three and out, and here's a wild play. Their punter uh, bobbles a snap, a bad snap, and he barely gets the punt off, but again, really good field position for you guys. And, and really kind of a risky play um, here by your kick returner to field the punt and uh, get down to the 30 yard line. Yeah, that was Keelan Nelson again. You know, he don't necessarily want him to do that, <laughs> but um, you know, it ended up working out for us. So that takes you into the halftime break with a 37 to eight lead. Hot Springs does receive the opening kickoff for the third quarter. Um, and, and a good run here again by the running back, but Batonio Hughes comes from the other side of the field and hawks him down. Uh, otherwise that would have been a touchdown run here early. Yeah, Latonio is doing a great job of uh, pursuit and getting, coming all the way from across the other side of the field, getting to the football, saving us a score right there. And that did save seven points because the Trojans, as we'll see coming up on this, on this drive, do not score as your defense comes up big here uh, in the red zone. And that's what we talk about uh, to our defensive guys. We've got to play every snap of the game. Um, you know, just because they might break one, well, somebody's got to go get the football. So you guys, guys do get the ball back. Tough break there, good, good coverage by their defense. Yeah, just good coverage right there. Um, they've got some really good players over on, at Hot Springs. And, um, you know, situation, they're going to they're gonna win some, gonna, we're going to lose some. It's okay as long as we're able to, to make up for it. So right here, we, we had to punt. We were pinned deep in our own territory. So fourth down, just go ahead and punt it. Let our defense go get us the ball back. Tough run there by Hot Springs. Sets up for a second down play. And a great tackle there by your defense. Yeah, and that's what I like seeing. A lot of blue jerseys on the football. They do take a deep shot here, but overthrow them and you guys will get the ball back on the punt. And their punter did have a good night. He got some good rolls, uh, got you guys pinned back into your own territory a few, a few times. Yeah, and that's okay. As long as we get the football at the end of it, um, especially with the weather conditions, sometimes it's, uh, if you're, Take a risk to field that punt. You know, you might 
give the ball back to him. Right. Buster Thomas making a play with his legs again. So right here, we, we knew they were bringing the pressure, so we decided to get the back out of the backfield and get the ball out to him quick and let him uh, go make a play. So you throw it to Braylon Bailey that time. This time you hand it off to him for a touchdown. Talk a little bit about um, your backfield. You have really, two really talented running backs. Braylon Bailey, player of the week last week. This week, Jayshon Davis with a huge game. Uh, how, how just confident does that make you guys having two very talented backs in your backfield? Oh, it's huge because um, Jayshon's the bigger back. And then when he's not in, you know, we've got Braylon Bailey to come in. He's more of a speed back. And, uh, it's just, it's just a big one-two punch for us on offense. So a good kick return there by the Trojans and a good tackle to save a touchdown yet again. Yeah, Keelan Nelson going and hawking down the ball carrier, um, saving us a touchdown. It's a great job of just wrapping the ball carrier up. I mean, getting him down. Good coverage there. Maybe just a tough penalty there. It looked like good coverage. Both, both players kind of going for the ball. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Um, Biggest thing is just being aggressive on defense. I'm okay with aggressive penalties. So they punch this one in. They do go for two. A bad snap um, on the ground results in them not being able to complete that. So uh, they, they do make it 44-14 um, here and, and another good run there um, by your offense. Here's Braylon Bailey running. Um, broke a big one. He just kind of got a cramp late in that run. <laughs> um, otherwise, he might have got, got a touchdown. Pass knocked away, and here, here, here's a situation where you, you have a big lead at the end of the game, and you get a chance to get some of the second string guys and some of the younger guys maybe. How, how big is that for maybe later on in the season if you need some of those guys and for their development as well? I think it's huge for us. Um, you know, getting those guys in the game, giving them some game reps, some Friday night reps is huge for them and their development and um, our confidence and their confidence as well. Um, gives them confidence to, to maybe get better as we get going through the season giving them real, real live reps. So here you guys just trying to get a first down, run the clock out a little bit. And here we are in victory formation. Uh, you love to see victory formation. That means you did a good job and you came away with a victory. That's the best formation in football. <laughs> there best you go. Best formation in football. Um, so so Jayshon Davis did have a big game, but I want to talk a little bit about the offensive line. I thought they played a, a very good game blocking for him and giving him some big holes to run through. They did. Our offensive line was very, we were very excited to see how they performed Friday night. Um, especially coming off of Camden, you know, um, we w w stressed really hard on the, on the run with them all week long in practice, and they responded really well to it. They did a great job all Friday. All right, that's awesome. So we're going to go to the players of the week. These are the Edward Jones players of the week. Offensively, Jay Sean Davis, a big game for him. On defense, Kalen Jones and special teams, Keelan Nelson. Uh, first, let's touch on Jay Sean Davis, four touchdowns this week. Um, just a, a massive game from him. Huge game, and we, we hope to have a few more games like that out of him. Um, but 17 carries, 174 yards, uh, four touchdowns, um, just shows the kind of talent level that he has. Yeah. Okay, so, so Kalen Jones did come up with an interception Friday night. Big game from him as well. Huge game for Kalen. You know, he had four tackles, one for, for a loss. Um, and he had that, that pick, um, was flying all over, the, all over the field for us. He also, you know, had some plays that you didn't see um, where the quarterback's looking for his receiver, and Kalen's got him locked down. And, uh, he's a huge force on Friday night. Special teams, Keelan Nelson, some big tackles uh, on the kick returns. Yeah, he, he saved us two touchdowns um, on special teams, just flying to the football, making, taking good angles, um, and just playing all the way through the entire play. And also was able to, to get that punt and took it a yeah. little bit. So yeah. uh, he had a huge night on special teams for us. And we also do have the Southwest Auto Collection Badger Spirit Award. That's going to go to Kendrick Knox. Coach, how, what did he do uh, to, de to deserve this award this week? Kendrick Knox is a great offensive lineman for us. He had a really good night Friday night. Um, Kendrick is one of those players that, you know, doesn't say a whole lot, um, but he's always doing right. Um, you know, he's one of those guys that doesn't matter what's going on in his life. Um, what, no matter what it is, he's always showing up with a good attitude um, and, and being – what it takes to be a leader and, and help us succeed. And, and, you know, he's dealt with a lot. Um, he's had a lot going on right now, and um, he's still showing up, smile on his face, ready to work and get better. Well, that's great. Um, so now we're going to go into some scores from last week. Uh, we, we did defeat, again, Hot Springs 44-14. And the 7-4-A is a very, very tough conference. Um, here's some scores from last week. What, what stands out to you guys? Robinson, a victory. Malvern and Nashville all coming up with victories. 
Um, again, a very tough conference and some very good football teams. A lot of very good football teams. And, you know, I think a lot of people are still working out um, minor issues with offense and defense, just like we are. Um, you see some of those scores, you know, they might be closer than what you'd expect. Um, but that's, you know, the way everything is right now, it's, I think everybody's going through the same things with, you know, missed snaps, um, fumbles, you know, turnovers. I think everybody's kind of, we're a little bit further back than we w would be in a normal year. Right, cause especially because of the COVID restrictions and the limited right. practice time and all of that. Right. Um, so now we're going to go look at some of the scores, or some games, excuse me, for the upcoming week. Uh, we do have Greenbrier at home. The Badgers have Greenbrier at home. Um, so again, some very uh, good games. Robinson and Marion, a good game. Uh, talk a little bit about looking ahead to this Friday uh, against Greenbrier. Greenbrier is going to be a great game. Um, Greenbrier is historically, you know, very, they're very coached, very well coached team with Coach Tribble. He does a great job over there. He's been over there for a while now. Um, you know, you can always expect his team to come out and play hard every snap of the football game. They're going to be sound in what they do, and they're going to do things right. And if you make a mistake, they're going to take advantage of it. Um, so it's going to be a really, really good game Friday night. Uh, so what's some of the game plan against them? What are you guys looking to do against Green Bar? I know it may be Monday. You may not have had as much of a chance to look at them because it's early in the week. But what, what are some things you guys are looking to do against them? Yeah, we're, you know, I don't give away too much. <laughs> but, um, you know, Green Bar does a little bit different things than, than we saw on Friday. So we're going to adjust and, and uh, try to get the ball. Got, we're finding ways to get the ball in our best players' hands in space still. Um, that's going to be the game plan every Friday. And we're just finding different ways to do that. Uh, so. Uh, this is the last non-conference game of the year. Um, then you'll go into your conference schedule. You, you guys have played two 5A teams already, another 5A team this coming week. Do you think that that helps get you prepared for, for the rugged conference schedule of the 7-4A? I think it really does. And, you know, I'm, we're, we're competitors as coaches. We're competitors our players are. Um, you know, our players, they don't care who it is, who we, who we step on the field for, with. Um, they, they just want to play, and uh, they're confident in what they do, and that's how we coach them to be as well, um, but I think that does, that talent level helps us for once we get into conference, it helps, you know, there's not as much of a drop off as you would see in a lot of non-conference schedules. Okay, so what are some things that you guys are maybe looking to improve on? Like I said, the last non-conference game can get you uh, ready for the conference schedule. What are some things you guys are especially looking to improve on going into the last game? Yeah, so what we're, you know, our whole goal is to go 3-0 in non-conference, give us some momentum going into our conference play. Um, and I, I saw a lot of improvement from um, week one to week two of, of our non-conference schedule. And, you know, that's pretty consistent with how it is on a normal, normal season. Um, but, you know, this week I thought Friday we had a lot of momentum to build on and improve on. Gave us a lot of confidence going into this week. Awesome. So, like I said, Greenbrier uh, is going to be coming to Badger Stadium on Friday, this Friday at 7 o'clock. Um, for ticket information, you can go to the Badger Athletics Facebook page or at APSD underscore athletics on Twitter for ticket information and all your scores and updates for everything Badger Athletics will be on those pages. If you're not able to make the game Friday night, you can log on to ArkadelphiaBadgerTV.com slash broadcast and be able to watch the game this Friday as the Badgers welcome Greenbrier to town. So, Coach, again, thanks for being with us. Congrats on the win this Friday, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Go Badgers. Go Badgers. Sponsors of Inside Badger Football include Shelter Insurance, Southwest Sporting Goods, Taylor King and Associates, Mary and Martha's Florist and Gifts, Price and Company, Doctors Rob and Gary Rucker, Eccles, Thompson and Ebo, Farm Bureau Insurance of Clark County. Turner and Turner, Attorneys at Law. EasyBins.com. Blake Bell of Edward Jones Investments. The accounting firm of Turner, Rogers, Manning and Plyler. Welch Funeral Home. Roger Wingfield of State Farm Insurance and Southern Bancor. Inside Badger Football is produced each week by Washita Baptist University's Rogers Department of Communication.